<laughs> What's up guys? Hope you're doing good. We are now 2.8. No, there's not eight days in a week. Oh dear. That was a good start, wasn't it, to the vlog? 2.8. 2.5 weeks out um, of the first show of the year. Very excited now. Um, I'm out of breath because I've just done some posing, um, which I will show you on the vlog, which will come up now. Okay, guys, so we're back at the desk, um, which is my office. So I work at a desk. This is where we work. For anyone that really cares that much, this is the setup. Um, just about to eat some lunch, so just did that posing. I tend to just pose before lunch, mainly just because I just I want to. I feel like I've earned my lunch then. Uh, we've posed with fire home. Hard going. Um, so yeah. Lunch today is, we've got the usual. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that what that is. That is an egg wrap. So there's an egg omelette inside there with all the veg, can of Monster, and then crumpet and yogurt for after. This is meal two of the day. Um, and we are going to be watching a episode of Worth It on YouTube with my food. This is something that happens during prep to myself and others. Basically, I get really good enjoyment out of eating my food while watching other people eat their food. As weird as that sounds, and you're probably thinking what is going on with you, what is in your head, in prep you'll understand. So if you ever dieted to very low levels of body fat, you'll understand that you get good pleasure out of watching other people eat better food than you. Um, don't know why, not sure why, it's just a habit that I've done and I like watching it. So if you want to check it out, it's called Worth It. And they've got loads of seasons where you can see the difference between a $5 pizza against a $1,000 pizza. So it's just quite entertaining for my lunch break as well. Um, so yeah, go into a bit more detail about um, some of the things like the mindset and the hormonal stuff of prep in probably later in the episode but I'm going to eat this now before it gets too cold um, so yeah we'll join you hopefully in the gym in a bit alright guys so we're going to head to the gym and this is the uh, this is the common the common task that preppers will suffer each day and that's and, and that's the stairs and the reason being is because every step is uh, just just blunts the mind a little bit because it, it, it hurts so but yeah this is the stairs anyway time to go to the gym all right guys so just a little bit of a voiceover on today's session um mainly because youtube just decided to delete my videos when there's music playing in the gym which is a pain in the ass because you then got to re-upload it and edit it so just a little voiceover of the gym segment from today so today's workout was push um first session of the week sets of eight here on 45 kilo dumbbells um and i want to just take <clears throat> this time to just sort of talk about your weight selection in a dieting phase especially an extended dieting phase where the likelihood of progressive overload is 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 smaller each week you, you're probably not going to progress your lifts um like you normally would in sort of a, a gaining phase or perhaps even the start of a diet so that was like 45 for eight um fairly not not too bad not, not easy but still still some decent stimulus this is the second set on 45 kilos here so i do get this for eight but you'll see as i come to the last rep the the difficulty of it and this is where you need to be clever with your selection because the reality is i've got two more sets for eight reps left on this before my next exercise 
I'm probably not going to get another set of eight based on how this last rep looked. So you'll see now coming up, like this is the last rep on eight. So pretty hard, I would say like roughly an RP 9.5, maybe nine. Um, so on my third set coming up, what I've done is I've been clever with my weight selection, which you need to be in a contest prep and a dieting phase. So I've dropped the weight by two and a half kilos so I could still get my reps out. So what I actually managed to do is I managed to get 45 for two sets of eight, and then I got 42.5 for two sets of eight. The reality is if I did my third and fourth set on 45 kilos, I probably may have got seven reps, and then on the last set I may have got six reps. So the total volume really would be quite low. Um, and yeah, it's uh, for me right now, this is just a clever, clever way from a selection point of view. Um, to sort of maintain my volume um, and my load on those lifts. So pretty happy with them. Um, so moving on to the second exercise, we've got a barbell shoulder press here um, in the seated position. Bit of a pain in the ass to set up in your gym. If you haven't sort of got this set up, it can be done on a Smith machine, but the tension I just find is is not as good as with the normal barbell shoulder press like like set up sort of on a free bar so if you can get this set up it's a real killer for the shoulders um you'll see sort of roughly shoulder width apart with my hand grip um and you'll see as i come to the last rep i do rack it on the seventh and that's mainly just because i don't feel i've probably got another rep in me to get eight so i quickly put the weight back down pick it up again and then just squeeze the last rep out I'm one of those people that really likes to hit my rep target um, and especially while I'm dieting as well. It makes up more volume so it just from that point of view it makes more sense to me. So last set here I think on 62.5 kilos so I didn't film the second set so we went up two and a half kilos heavier because um, I was feeling good on it. Um, bits faster than I would have liked looking back at this footage like it's moving just a tad too fast and I think that was me just wanting to get that set done um but happy with how it went i managed to get 60 for eight and then 62.5 for two sets of eight so three sets in total on this movement um pretty happy with how it was moving and then yeah so last rep here big struggle but managed to get it up in the end just <laughs> there's a lockout finally um so moving on to a incline cable fly with um a sort of a rest pause after this set but you wouldn't have seen that because i don't think i recorded it for long enough to get the rest pause in um i didn't record any other movements after this so i did lateral raises for sets of 15 um and then i did weighted dips for sets of eight and then i did overhead dumbbell extension for sets of 15 um and with a rest pause on the lateral raises so pretty pretty good workout i was happy with things retained on most of my numbers Flat dumbbell press did drop off a little bit, but that's to be expected because I'm roughly sort of two and a half pounds down from last week's numbers. Every pound or I drop now, I kind of notice in the gym a little bit more, but just got to keep going and make sure we uh, hold on to that harder muscle. So guys, so it's the next day. Um, it's Wednesday, the 1st of August now. Um, so just doing some client check-ins now. Basically for my client check-ins, they have sheets to fill in throughout the week like this um, and they've got their training, they've got measurements, check-in check -in sections and basically I will video myself going over talking about the week, how the week's gone um, and then give them their feedback. So very good way of like making sure that their check-ins are efficient and it's not just a one word email of saying here is your new macros. So um, right anyway. What am I doing with this camera? Oh my god. There we go. We're there. Alright, so yesterday was push workout. You would have seen there was some bits missing of it. Just because it just got really busy in the gym. Like, as I got towards the end of the workout. Um, but, such is life. That's one of those things. Um, and I didn't want to record too much while people were in the gym because it was just too busy um, to do it, but black coffee. Very nice black coffee. But this is the two and a half weeks now out to the first show, so still weighing at 164 pounds. I'm expecting a drop very, very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Um, if not, and I'm sure there'll probably be a change that's going to take place. 
There was no refeed this week, so usually on a Monday, take a refeed, um, and then we will just obviously assess things, but because we were looking to push for maximum fat loss, the refeed got pushed back. We're just literally going forward um, each day on 1,750 calories, um, which is hard, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie and say it's really easy. It's not bad hunger, like it's not bad from, from a hunger aspect because I can deal with that. Like I can deal with hunger during the day I don't care if I'm a little bit hungry before my meals or if for like a few hours out of the day I'm a, I'm like a bit more sort of ravenous than normal. Like I don't care for that. Like I can deal with stuff like that. And that's not the be all and end all. What I really suffer with when it comes to contest prep, and I think a lot of people need to realise is is the fatigue. Is just the general fatigue of the day-to-day -day lifestyle of what you do so this is just things like walking around like that can be quite it can be quite fatiguing sometimes and you feel like your you feel like your legs are quite hollow and you just feel like you're just dragging your heels everywhere you go and like climbing the stairs yesterday or going down the stairs is not a normal day-to-day -day task which can be a bit harder um and you just you just got to crack on with it and you um but yeah like just to talk about a bit about hormonally with contest preps and what they can do. Because again, this is a thing which not a lot of people talk about, because it is a private thing, but I'm gonna share with you because it's just, why not? Hormonally, you will probably tank your libido to rock bottom when you're in a contest prep. So for anyone that doesn't know, libido is basically your sex drive. It's basically that kind of element um, where food is more appealing than most other things. But this is just part of contest prep and getting to low body fat. It's not specifically your actual macros that you're on. People always think that, oh, if my fats go super, super low, then it's because, uh, it's because that's why my libido's tanked. But that's not true. It's more about your actual levels of your body fat. Because I know people that are on quite a lot of food they're on like higher than sort of 40, 50 grams of fat, which is quite a lot in a contest prep, and they're still tanked with the bido. And that's just because they're shredded, they're as low as the body fat can go, um, and that's just the case of it. And when it comes to that post-show period, where people start eating more, um, getting their food back up, it can still take a long time for hormones to restore to a normal level. They don't just go like that with one cheat meal overnight. They do not do that. It takes a long time to build it back up after that period. So if you're expecting to go and have a cheat meal post-show and have all this libido come back and feeling normal again, you're, you're in for a bad time. And if you think that eating more and more and more will result in the libido coming back quicker, your hormones coming back to normal quicker, again, it just doesn't work like that. This is why you've got to take that approach of Yes, a sensible calorie increase, but then be patient with the hormone build that comes back with it. But it's just the reality of a contest prep, guys. Like, it's fucking, you're dieting to levels of body fat your body does not want to be in. Your body doesn't want to get to these sort of unoptimal levels of body fat. It doesn't want to get there. It's trying to hold on as much as possible. But obviously, you're forcing your, it, it into that place with calories with expenditure, with cardio, whatever it might be. So that's just literally the, the, the downfall that comes with it. So one of the big things I think we all need to realize is that is hormonally you're gonna suffer. And for me, I, I would rather obviously that than the hunger side of things. Like to be honest, like hunger is not too big of an issue for me. I can deal with that, like I said. But I would rather like things like libido be around or actually be higher than sort of your actual hunger. You know what I mean? It's difficult to understand. I would rather be more hungry and have better hormone levels. Like the the worst thing about prep is just the fatigue side of things, and that's and that's really it for me. Like I don't really care about anything else. It's just fatigue. I wish you didn't have. It's just that when you go into your training sessions, there's not really much energy when you go in. There's not really much motivation for train. Again, I'll be honest. Like. I don't get motivated to train like I would in an off season because I know I'm gonna go in and get a PB. 
with this at the minute, I know I'm just going in to retain my lifts or possibly even decrease them slightly just to maintain some volume. So it's just all these things that you've got to take into account. If you're going to go into a very long dieting phase, yes, it's cool getting lean, but there's got to be that or sort of element that you've got to accept that these things will happen. Um, and this is why I'm telling you because not a lot of people tell people about this kind of stuff. Um, people just think that you get lean and that's it. And then, yeah, it's all over, but it's not. There's, there's, there's side effects that come with it. Even if you're a natural bodybuilder, you can do what you can with supplements and stuff. Like you can take things like um, sort of 5-HTP, you can take natural testosterone boosters, you can take ashwagandha and stuff to reduce cortisol levels and everything, but they're only there to really supplement a little bit. They're not gonna help a massive amount. I've tried na natural testosterone boosters before. They're just, they're, they're shy, they don't do anything. Um, so it's, for me, it's just a case of cracking on. Got to get lean, got to get down to what we need to do. And that's what you got to do if you're a competitive bodybuilder. Um, just got to accept it and get on with it. But I'm going to wrap up this there before I rather wrap on too long about hormones and libido and stuff because I'm sure it's boring this shit out of you. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that kind of segment of my days. So yesterday was Tuesday, today is Wednesday. Um, I'll try and get a leg session in soon. Um, I'll try and film one on probably this weekend. We'll see. I'll see if I can get one out. Um, the deadlifts, which is okay actually they've stayed strong throughout this contest prep which is nice so yeah we'll leave it there guys um hope you're all good and remember to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one